There were some scheduling difficulties around the arrival of my third and final offspring that delayed the release of this video. Sorry about that. But good news, everyone. It's finally here. Desk PC part two, the finishing touches. TunnelBear is the simple VPN app that makes it easy to browse privately and enjoy a more open internet. To try TunnelBear for free, check out the link in the video description. So step one was to remove the literal dust that had settled on this project, then roll it over to our shooting location to begin work. Those of you who haven't seen part one, you should probably go back and watch it up there, but I'll get you up to speed anyway. We constructed this desk out of a single piece of MDF and we made a slight miscalculation that resulted in our piece of glass that we got on Craigslist being slightly smaller than our desk. No problem. So now that we're back at it, we're going to manufacture a small lip to both hide our error and to hold our glass snugly in place and keep it from sliding around. So while my dad ran to Home Depot to get the necessary cuts made, Jake set to work on one of the most important steps of any complicated custom build, pre-testing to ensure that the hardware works before you install it. Then it was time to begin what would prove to be by far the most tedious part of this entire process. Aligning hardware as perfectly as possible and creating all of the mounting points that we're going to need for final assembly. So after a quick test hole and a scrap piece of wood, we were ready to create the motherboard mount, which was actually one of the simpler ones. We just positioned it with the correct spacing to allow for cable management up the side later, poked a marker through the holes, center punched and drilled for the same threaded inserts that I used for the bottom mounted desk PC project, which you can check out here. Then there was another delay. I think a big part of why this project has taken so long has been indecision. Done. We have many other holes okay. to debate for the rest of the day. Why are you creating work? work? That's like two minutes. Why are you creating work out of no, out of no work? Okay, it's just because you don't have any handy skills. Anyone else does. You're the handiest person I know, Jake. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> so with that out of the way, it was time to work on water cooling. Now, the original concept was to use hardline tubing, like every other desk PC ever. But in part because hardline is tedious, and in part because we wanted to do something a little bit different, we ended up deciding to drill 5 8 inch holes through to the bottom of the table and route both our cables and our tubing down there for a really clean look. So with that settled, we were able to mark the mounting points for the radiators in such a way that the air holes wouldn't interfere with our diagonally positioned legs on the bottom, and then move on to the hard drives. Hard drives were another case of, we came in with one plan and left with a completely different one. We were originally going to use L brackets and screw them into threaded inserts from the top. But hey, why not put the standoffs in the drives, then drill all the way through and use long 632 bolts? So using templates, we aligned our four drive RAID 10 as best we could. And then after a test fit with our custom length cable mod SATA cables, we ended up having to widen the holes a little bit for some more wiggle room, but it looks pretty good. And hey, at least we missed accidentally drilling through the legs on the bottom, right? This time we did. No such luck with the reservoirs. Spacing wise, we wanted to keep somewhat consistent with what we'd done with the hard drives, which put our tubing right over the leg. Now what? Well, we ended up drilling straight down, then veering off at an angle with our 5 8 inch bit. It's not perfect, but the hole isn't that much bigger, and once it's painted black, it shouldn't end up being that noticeable, leading us to more problems. While my dad worked on the outer lip, I began work on the radiators. While the fan holes for them won't interfere with the legs, the tubing, unfortunately, will. So if we flip it over and we try and go straight down to the bottom of the table, we go right into the legs. If we have the tubing come up and then out, we're short and elbow fitting, and we end up with one of the tubes really close to where the tubes go through for the reservoirs, and it's gonna end up looking dumb. Damn it, Jake! 
So I decided to change gears and work on the mounting for the GPU and the SSD. So I decided on a height for the floating video card mount and got the water block installed on our GTX 1080 so that we could build the mount and mark our tubing holes while my dad built a small wooden post with a threaded insert to mount our PCI Express SSD. So we made good progress for a while. We completed the SSD mount, it lined up perfectly. Then we decided to use some extra mounting holes that EK left open in their block design to bolt the GPU into the bottom of the desk with inserts, and we finalized the holes for the power supply, and then we went back to debating the damn radiators and pumps again. Then it was drill, drill, drill. Insert holes for the GPU and power supply, remeasuring the very approximated holes for the CPU block tubing, drilling holes for the GPU, and damn it! I hit a leg again. This time I cracked a support, but it doesn't seem to be a major structural issue. Next, we drilled the holes for the front intakes. They're not quite perfect, but we're gonna cover them with some Silverstone filters for now that'll mask small errors. And later on, I might ask Protocase to make something custom for it. After running out of battery, because that hole saw is a bit of a beast, and running out to Home Depot for a corded drill, we drilled the holes for the radiator tubing, hit the legs again, Holy crap, I wish we had planned that out a little bit better. And we are finally done the holes. Except wait, no, no, I need holes for the power wires for the pumps and the fans. <sighs> we also grabbed a power sander and some 220 grit sandpaper while we were out. Remember though that this step wouldn't be necessary if we hadn't bunged up the size of our desk, so it shouldn't affect your cost if you were to recreate the project. And some washable furnace filter that along with some X-Acto knife cut border pieces should be a pretty darn good solution to allowing access to the machine's I.O. while keeping out dust. The pumps and radiators go back in one more time to drill their power holes, and we are pretty much ready to paint, which I'm gonna do off camera whenever I have some time. So part three will be the final assembly and the conclusion. And I promise it won't take as long as part one to part two did. So stay tuned. And stay tuned on MassDrop.com. MassDrop is the site, well, community really, where users talk about products they're interested in buying. Then MassDrop kind of goes, oh yeah, what's that you're interested in? Goes to the manufacturers or authorized resellers and places a bulk order at a discounted price. Then the more people buy it, the lower the price goes. And now they're featuring a drop for the Hi Fi Man RE00 IEMs. They feature nine millimeter dynamic drivers. They ship with two pairs of silicone ear tips and they're only 35 US dollars. Woo! So check them and other drops out at the link in the video description. MassDrop has all kinds of stuff. Everything from audio gear to keyboards to like camping gear. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured at Amazon in the video description. Also linked in the description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So click that little button in the top right corner to check out our latest video over on Channel Super Fun.